Restaurant Unstoppable. What the most successful restaurateurs know that you don't. Um, one thing that I love about what you do, um, and something I picked up on just through looking and, and doing the, the, the research I did, I give myself an hour to read a couple of uh, <laughs> nice. uh, articles. Nice. I don't want to do too much research. I don't like to know too much. Yep. Uh, but I did pick up on the fact that you're very involved with your community. Uh, um, yeah. Your work extends beyond your restaurant, mm -hmm. not just within the community. I mean, you work with the schools. You, you, yep. know, you work with other restaurateurs. You put together events with other restaurateurs. Yep. I mean, the power in that, the power totally. of getting involved, get into that. So, you know, being in the community is something that's very, you know, it's easy to do, I almost say. And I think it takes a, a whole community to make changes in your community. And then you hope that those changes will spread throughout, you know, yeah. a bigger, you know, outreach, you know, in the New England area for us, you know, and then throughout the country as well and maybe throughout the world you never know what happens you know um and one of the easiest ones for me was getting involved in the school district you know they asked me i think it was like four years ago to come in and and uh, make chicken parmesan for like an event at night for them and i was like oh yeah totally i love chicken parmesan and they brought out these tyson chicken patties these frozen like little circle chicken patties i was <sighs> like oh my gosh I was, <laughs> and then i was astounded to, you know because i had no idea how yeah. the f school food system worked completely um i opened up the freezer and you know more frozen product than actual fresh product in there and it's and it's not their fault you know there's only so much money resources yeah. yeah there's only so much money that a school system is given to feed a child every single day you know and that's it's it's government funded so yeah. to me i'm like okay you know what i have access to all these farms i know a lot of people so like let me use my my resources to make these things happen so you know i signed up with the school district i'm actually an employee of the school district if you say for the kittery school district and i decided you know what i'm going to dedicate myself to helping um introduce more fresh you know, from scratch cuisine um, to to our school district, which my kids are involved in, so it's in a no-brainer for me as well. Um, and it directs my, uh, it affects my community directly, you know, yeah. all together. So, you know, it, when did you start doing this? Uh, four years ago. And mm, weird, interesting. Right around the time things started turning around. Yeah, exactly. Too, yeah, right? yeah. I found like maybe you know, and and I think this is. You know, as a as a restaurateur, as a chef also, uh, you know, that wants to run a successful business, things like this help you run a successful business. You know, you know, you into a lot of people did still, you know, Vito had been around for a while then at that point still didn't know about us at all. You know, maybe didn't know about Ornell's, you know, as I continued on and things like that. So I was able to introduce themselves to them, to our uh, to my businesses as well. But it didn't really matter to me about that part. It mattered more about giving back to our yeah. community. Yeah, aspect. And again, like I think we we started talking about earlier, you don't do all these things to get a return. No, you, it, you do these things because it's your obligation. You do these things because it's what we're meant. We're tribal. We're yeah. meant to, to to give back to the tribe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I just had this conversation with my general manager yesterday. Actually, like I want to use our platform here for the better of our community. Yeah. You know, and it's is it through these dinners? You know, we just I, we were talking earlier about the dinner that we did with. Uh, Tony and Elma like the other day, you know, and it was basically each chef had their own nonprofit, you know, Jim, uh, the Jimmy Fund, uh, Full Plates, Full Potential, you know, there's so many different ones, you know, and then we were able to give, you know, money to these, you know, we've done uh, the immigration dinner here where we bought uh, three nonprofits in that help uh, immigration rights, you know, and we and it was great, super informative. We actually did a medical marijuana dinner here as well, you know, to help give to uh, the funding of passing medical marijuana in New Hampshire as well. You know, just things that hit home to me that I feel, you know, like we can inform the community about as yeah. well, you know. Yeah. Um, so the other thing that you do, which I think is genius, I don't know if it was meant to be genius or just, a, you know, just the, the chefs after dark, which uh -huh. is something I've heard a lot about. And totally. I mean, get into that. What is that? So this is a cool event. Myself and Lee Frank, uh, the chef owner of Otis restaurant in Exeter, um, him and I started it, you know, and really like we had heard that something like this was going on in the West Coast. We're like, this is something cool. Like we should totally do something like this. When did you guys have this conversation? Uh, this is 20, 2013, okay. something like yep. that. Um, and he was at Annika Jan's at the time in Kittery and he's like, I got the perfect spot. You know, we do it out of my place. And I was like, great, let's do it. And so it's basically, you know, competition brings collaboration, you know, is what we said. And, uh, 
And so we got, we picked two chefs from the community, uh, picked three ingredients and we didn't know how it would work out. And, you know, and we, I think our very first one was like Evan Hennessy and uh, Ben Hasty or something yeah. like that. And, uh, and I didn't even know them really at the time. You know, I worked f- with Evan for like, uh, that one catering gig and, uh, um, and we brought them in and showed them three ingredients. They had one hour to create two dishes and it packed the house that night. We yeah. were like, oh my gosh, like this is actually a thing. Like people want to, you know, and this, most. This is open to the public, right? It's open to the public and it started at 1130 and, or 11 o'clock at night and it went to one o'clock in the morning. That's you know? amazing. Man. And when most restaurant people are actually up, yeah. you know. What, so what day? Was it a Monday? It was a Tuesday, Tuesday night. Okay. Yeah, super random, you know, but it packed the house, you know. And it Where was, did you guys host it? Is it at at Annika, okay. Annika Jans. Okay. Always at Annika Jans. And now like we kind of move it around here and then yeah. i think you know matt from moxie has taken it on like for a halloween event and stuff nice. like that and different forms of it as well but it's a super super fun event um all together and it's just fun to watch these chefs and like people are like you you forget you know even as myself i've i competed in it i was like well this is why i got into it you know i love cooking i love fast uh, you know knives flames yeah. you know all those things you know and so and it gets you thinking on your feet constantly what was like, your vision for it when you when you first got like what was the intent was it just for fun or just like, for fun you know yeah. just to kind of get us together selling tickets you know, to this thing no we weren't selling tickets or? it was it was completely free you know and the chefs did it you I know and it, i think i like whoever won got like a wood spoon and whoever lost got like a fork or something <laughs> like that you know um and it was just fun to watch these you know these chefs compete and also you know you you watch them get at it you know i I think Justin Walker was in it one time and to watch him cook at that, at that speed and create some of these things. I was like, wow, wow this is incredible. Yeah, yeah. It's to- it totally was. And especially for young cooks, you know, they would be in the front row looking at them and they were just going so fast and putting out these things and these dishes were incredible. You know, the only thing I wish I could change out of it is to make it so everybody could taste the food. But that yeah. was like the hard part. Yeah. Behind it, you know? I hear you. But here's why what you, you mentioned something that really struck a vein with me. You said competition breeds collaboration. Yep. Is that what it was? Yep. And that's why I, I was like, this is genius because it, it, when you bring people together, like I think for some reason we look at other people mm-hmm. as it's, it, ego gets in the way and it, it becomes about the reputation or us versus them. But the totally. truth is that it's those people I and mean, I'm guaranteeing all those people who are doing this are probably at the top of their game within the, yep. the Seacoast area. Yep. And it's those who come together that go further. Yeah, right? no, definitely. And, is. and you're networking, you're sharing knowledge, you're getting that camaraderie, you're probably finding people to employ, you're creating opportunities. Like what has stu- like what has stemmed from this? Like, yeah, that's the thing right there. You know, especially you know, we always we always joked around. There was only one time a year as chefs we could get together, and it was like this one event that we used to have, Taste of the Nation, in uh, Portsmouth. You know, like for all of us to group together. So it was events like that to be able to like sit down and be able to talk to each other, knowing that meet these new line cooks you know or yeah you know i met plenty of people that were like hey i've always wanted to meet you you know like it's so in pleasure you know like in talk about food or not even talk about food just talk about how your day was you know all together you know and so those you know those things when you meet these people like those those meetings stick and then you're like hey i remember this person like let me call them up you know maybe they have an idea for me you know i love that and it was like those things i remember the very first time i met evan mallet and it still sticks in my head you know and I owe a lot to him. You, you know, he's he like, was restaurant unstoppable number one first guest. Oh, really? Ever. Yeah, no way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I could see why too. I gotta get him back on the show. Yeah, yeah, he's 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 an incredible human altogether. Yeah. You know, and I I think so I intelligent. Him, yeah, so intelligent. You know, like sometimes I'm just like, all right, you know, <laughs> like I don't even understand half the words you're telling me right now. But I look up to him not only as a chef, as a father, as a husband as well. You know, he's just a great all around person. Um, but when I met him, I was just like, gosh, you are what I want to be. You yeah. know? And he actually helped me start the tortilla business it, itself. Mm-hmm.